So I'm going to read it from the English Standard Version because that's what I got up right now. And uh, I don't want to mess with my electronics any more than I have to. <laughs> I have most of the verse memorized, but uh, I don't want to say anything out of text. So Mark 16, chapter 16, verse 16 says this, Whosoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whosoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs shall accompany those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They shall speak in two new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I want to preach to you this thought tonight. Getting over the it's not that bad mentality. Getting over the it's not that bad mentality. Can we pray? Lord, we thank you for your awesome presence in this place, Lord. The miracles that you've been doing. I'm going to claim those in Jesus' name, Lord. We felt your power, Lord, and your moving grace in this place. Hallelujah. And I can't wait to hear the reports, Lord, of what you have done. I pray that you would bless the word, Lord. Let it increase our faith, Lord. Let it help us make us better, Jesus. Hallelujah. And see victory through, Lord. Hallelujah. And live as more than and conquerors in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah we are apostolic some people don't understand what apostolic means but that just basically means that we adhere to the doctrine of the apostles as in the book of Acts hallelujah if you read Acts chapter 2 verse 38 it says this and Peter said unto them uh, be ha 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 funny that I get all tongue tied on that one huh <laughs> then Peter said unto them Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And this sign is unto you and unto your children, all that are far off, as many as our Lord, our God, shall call. Hallelujah. And it says a little later on with uh, many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from the sun toward generation. We understand that that message was the first New Testament message. It was the first Christian message after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the, and the Bible validates that by saying, And 3,000 souls were added unto the church that day. We are apostolic because we believe in repentance. Repentance is more than just saying that you're sorry. But repentance is completely turning away from sin. If you were an alcoholic... You're not drinking anymore. If you were a drug addict, you ain't touching drugs anymore. If you were abusive, you're not abusing anymore. It's a complete walking away. Hallelujah. True repentance is a change into the heart. It's a change into the mind. It's a change into the soul. Hallelujah. We believe in repentance. We also believe in baptism. Our verse said, if you believeth and are baptized, you shall be saved. If you believeth not, you shall be damned is how it says in the King James Version. And we understand that that word believe in the second part. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth, that believeth right there, actually means obey. And so better would be put to say it like this. He that obeys not shall be damned. And so we believe in baptism is a necessity for salvation. We see it as, as Peter begins to preach. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Philip follows by baptizing the eunuch. Hallelujah. We see Peter do it again with the jailer. Paul do it again with the disciples of John. And every time they baptize, they baptize in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so why would we change it? Thousands of years later, these people walked with Jesus. They knew Jesus first person. Hallelujah. And he even says it in the word of God that you should be baptized in the name of of Jesus hallelujah and we believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost it's not just a feeling that you get sometimes it's not just the goosebumps when you feel his presence but we believe in the infilling of the Holy Ghost we believe in the waters that never run dry that we can drink of and never thirst again and if you read your Bible it says this and they hallelujah these signs shall follow them that believe one of those signs is they shall speak with new tongues and I don't find it as a coincidence that when we read the book of Acts and it says and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with new tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance hallelujah later on in chapter of Acts 
It says that uh, they, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. But the question is, how did the Jews know the Gentiles were filled with the Holy Ghost? It says because they spake with other tongues and magnified God. Hallelujah. And I'm here to declare that same message that they declared thousands of years ago. That if you want to have the Holy Ghost, if you want to know that you have the Holy Ghost, you got to speak in other tongues. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. But along with that spirit, there comes gifts. Paul talks about some of these gifts. Hallelujah. The Bible says that when you have the Holy Ghost, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. It says things like this. And these signs shall follow is the verse that we read. They that believe. Hallelujah. So I want to talk to you tonight about some of those gifts. Hallelujah. And getting over the it's not that bad mentality. We are blessed living in America. We are blessed living in a place where most of our needs are taken care of. If you can't pay your bills, there's someone that can give you some money. If you can't feed your children, there's a place that you can go and get some food. Hallelujah. And I'm not saying any of that's bad. And we all fall on hard times sometimes. And I'm glad that we have places to go for a helping hand. But sometimes we become so dependent upon the system. Sometimes we become so dependent on where we know that we can get our needs provided. That we put God in second place. Hallelujah. It may just be a little headache, but I'm going straight for the Tylenol. I ain't got time to pray, but let's see if a pill can fix my problem. Hallelujah. I don't know if I can pay my rent this month, but instead of praying for God to answer away, I'm going to see if I can borrow some money. Friend, it's about time that we stop putting God as number two and that we go to him as number one because he has the hills of a thousand cattle. He has resources that never run dry. God will answer if you give him an opportunity. A lady with an issue of blood in Mark chapter 5. She has a problem. She spent all of her money. Hallelujah. Men had taken advantage of her. Said that if she did this or did that, that she'd be healed. And yet years have gone by. She has no more family that are there to support her. It's just her by herself. Poverty stricken. Still having the problem. That issue of blood in her body. But at some point, she heard Jesus was passing through. Hallelujah. And she said this, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. Because at some point, she got over the fact that it really is that bad. And this is my last resort. And so even though I've tried everything else, I'm going to run to Jesus. Hallelujah. There was no scripture that said that if you touch the hem of his garment, that you would be healed. In fact, the Bible would proclaim her as unclean. And she was not allowed to be in a public place without saying unclean letting people know because as she touched them they also would be unclean and so she was out of line she was in the wrong place but she got over this mentality that it isn't that bad and said if anything is within me I gotta touch Jesus and she reached out with her hand when she wasn't supposed to when she would have been condemned and touched the garment the response from Jesus to us we read because we know the end of the story. He turns and says, who touched me? She's probably fearing because she knows she's unclean. And now she's just touched one that they believe to be the Messiah. She's way out of line. And so she's probably fearful of her life. And as he begins to uh, begin to keep saying it, who touched me? And the people look around and the apostles are confused because the crowd was great. And many people are touched Jesus she finally speaks up just a little bit and said it was I but God doesn't sit back and say you wicked person and how could you defile me no he said that faith has made you whole and she was healed from that moment on hallelujah because she got past the place of the norm she got past the place of what was acceptable in society and said that if there's anything within me I gotta touch him you gotta get me 
on the mentality of it's not that bad and say, hey, if Jesus has the answer, I'm going to go to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray for Randy's uh, little girl, and I believe that God is going to provide a miracle because sometimes it is that bad. Blind Bartimaeus is in the street doing what he always did. Hallelujah. You can find his story in Mark chapter 10, verse 46 through 52. He's sitting in the street begging for alms. He had made a profession of sitting there and asking people to provide the need that he couldn't provide from himself because of his infirmity. He hears Jesus is coming by and he begins to cry out to him. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Not hearing anybody coming his way, he says it even louder. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. People begin to notice and start to try to get him to quiet down. Blind Bartimaeus, Jesus doesn't have time for you. Quit begging for alms. You probably just want some more money, but that didn't hinder him. He just began to cry all the more. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. I'm tired of this life. I'm tired of this lifestyle. I'm tired of not seeing because it's really that bad. Jesus, thou son of David have mercy upon me it didn't matter what the crowd said it didn't matter what the people thought but for blind Bartimaeus he was gonna make sure that he was heard right. hallelujah and there's some people hallelujah in churches that I've been in and maybe even sometime in this church that I know you have great need and I know that there is a great miracle that you, you are desperately wanting God to do. But I wonder how much it will take us to get to the point where we don't care about what we look like. And we don't care about what other people think. But our only care is that the master can hear me. As he begins to loud, uh, cry all the louder, Jesus begins to come to him. I don't know how loud blind Bartimaeus had to get before Jesus got hit, before he got the ear of Jesus, but he didn't let them, let it hinder him. In fact, he was thinking, this is my only opportunity. If I'm going to be healed, it's going to be today. And eventually, Jesus heard. I don't know if Jesus, Jesus knew all things. And I don't know if there was some set point where he said, okay, I know that his face right if he gets to this decibel. I don't know what was going through Jesus' mind, but I do know this, that blind Bartimaeus wouldn't stop until he got his attention and when he got the attention of the master his infirmity went away and the miracle was done that day and back when that happened I don't think blind Bartimaeus was worried about what the people thought of him and I don't think he cared if he was a little out of line but he said things like this I'm sure that I once was blind hallelujah but I called on Jesus and now I can see because blind Bartimaeus came to a point in his life where he said it really is that bad yeah. Zacchaeus was a wee old man a little old man was he hallelujah he wasn't liked no one liked Zacchaeus he was a publican he stole from people he was a wicked man hallelujah but he also heard that Jesus was coming by and he figured hey I'm a short guy and I can't press through the crowd and I won't be able to see Jesus if I stand behind him and so I'm going to give me an advantage hallelujah and while the rest of them were content with just sitting maybe behind someone else not really getting access to the master Zacchaeus decided hey there's a tree and I'm going to give me a better view he climbs that tree hallelujah and Jesus comes walking by and points to him and says hey Zacchaeus why don't you come with me the crowd's astonished the crowd's taking it all I wonder how many felt well I went to church all my life I wonder how many felt I pray every day but it was a man who was wicked who decided to do that one more thing to be noticed by Jesus and sometimes if you're not getting noticed by God you just need to go a little bit higher right, right, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise a little bit harder. Shout a little bit louder. Go a little bit deeper. Pray a little bit more. Because if you can get the attention of our God, everything will be worth it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then there was a man. Jesus is sitting eating. We find him in Mark chapter 2, verse 3 through 12. He's with a group of men at a table in a house. The house is so compact that nobody can get in. And it would have been so easy that day to look at the crowd and say, Today is not my day. Because there's no way I can get past this crowd and get to Jesus. It would have been easy to look and say, There's always tomorrow. There's another day that I can give my miracle. But there were a few men for their friend decided that they weren't going to wait till tomorrow. And they didn't care how big the crowd was. They would find a way to get to Jesus. And so as Jesus is in surely ministering to the different people, hallelujah, there began to be a little dust that fell from the ceiling. And I don't know if Jesus looked up and wondered what was going on or if he was so involved in what he was doing that he didn't even notice. But before long, that dust began to become more and more and more. And once that covered and protected those people from the sun, a roof top opened up. And ropes begin to lower a man who was sick and needed Jesus to touch him. They decided that they weren't going to let the crowds keep them from Jesus. They decided that they weren't going to come up with one more excuse of why they couldn't get their miracle. But they did something that was unprecedented in scripture. They destroyed a house just to get to Jesus. Hallelujah. And sometimes your miracle needs you to do something a little bit more than just come hallelujah sometimes you just need to rip the roof off the place hallelujah sometimes you need to get so crazy that if you are the only one that God can hear hallelujah he's gonna look down and touch you don't let the crowd hinder you don't let people stop you but begin to lift up Jesus because he does have the answer hallelujah the church has done a disservice to you people of God because we make it so convenient for you to ask for prayer and to see a miracle it used to be and I pray that it is in the days and I'm sure in some places it is but I pray it be that way in St. Helens that as the preacher preached and he preached faith and he preached miracles that you didn't have to give an altar call that you didn't have to ask people to come and be prayed for. But because the faith within them caused them to move, they would come to you. The Bible says, let those that are sick call for the elders. But in our way of trying to make things a little bit easier, maybe a little bit more uniform, forgive me for using this word, maybe a little bit more traditional, we ask you to come to us. But really, there should be something within you that comes to me. Hallelujah. I shouldn't have to beg you to pray. I shouldn't have to beg you to come and get your miracle. But there should be something inside of you, whether the preacher's here or not. Whether it's in the middle of a church service or in your prayer closet. That you understand that you have access to the throne. And Jesus can touch you right where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is not hindered by it just being you. Our God is not hindered just because there may be less than 20 in this place. God is still awesome. God is still mighty. And you want to know something that will give you unshakable faith? You want to know something that will turn this whole city upside down? You begin to see the blind healed. You begin to see the lame walk. You begin to see God come through in your circumstance. And my God, this city will be so on fire. Your faith will be so high that we will see mountains 
mountains move and strongholds fall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel like we need to give him some praise in this place because he is a prayer answering God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So the ball's in your court. Faith is in this place. The preach word's gone forth. I can't get your miracle for you. In fact, I am thoroughly convinced that even though there is the gift of miracles and gift of healings, and God can use people mightily through that, it's really not so much about my faith, but about the faith of the recipient. And I'm going to open up in just a little bit for some prayer I'm just going to open it up and if someone comes they can come and if no one comes then we'll just move on and we'll have some food and enjoy but let me just say this sometimes we feel like that we have to have faith that moves mountains before we can see a miracle But as the man sat with his son who was possessed with the devil in front of Jesus and Jesus said all things are possible if thou can believe. The man looked at Jesus and said this I believe Lord but help thou my unbelief. And Jesus didn't rebuke the man. He didn't walk away and say sorry you just don't have enough faith. He reached out to his son and his son was healed that day. So I'm not asking you to come with perfect faith. You may even have a little doubt in your heart. But just come. Because if you come with a sincere heart to God, God will answer with a sincere move. Hallelujah. Let's pray. And if you have a need that you'd like me to pray for, and it's not me, it's the Lord. But if there's a need that you'd like me to pray for, I'm going to open it up. And whosoever will, we have some, we have some oil here. But I'm not going to call you out. But let's pray. Lord, thank you, Lord, for your word, for your power. Lord, and I pray, Jesus. That the little faith, Lord, that may be stirring inside of us would be enough for us to move and not wait another day to get our miracle. Lord, let us have, Lord, enough faith to step out in this place and not care about what so-and-so thinks of us. Not listen to the doubts in our minds, but just walk forward with the little faith that we have and say, Lord, I believe.